I'm sitting out here on the beautiful Kansas Prairie this morning in this amazing stand of Indian blanket. It is just gorgeous. Looking around at these wildflowers, I can really just begin to see where they get their name because they are so thick and abundant right now that they are really just covering the ground like a thick, uh, brightly colored blanket. Hello, good morning. Let's go over to the shade to answer these questions. It's starting to get a little hot out here this morning already. My dogs have already found the shade over here. They, um, they come out here with me uh, every day to look at wildflowers and find inspiration for paintings. They're sort of my inspiration buddies. Say hi dogs, hi Pepper. Hi, Salt. All right, now you guys sit down and be good while I answer these questions, okay? There. Ah, oh, so much better in the shade. Okay. All right. Okay, girl. Hi, girl. Sit down. Be good. Okay. Question number one. One aspect I noticed was how you integrate text into paintings. The titles of the flowers, especially Malvin Neglecta Overlooked, intrigues me. My question is, how do you think text affects the meaning of the painting, that it contains it, and what led you to integrate verbal and visual expression in your work? I love this question because it brings me back to what we were just talking about, the names of wildflowers. Uh, the only paintings that I've ever done, actually, that integrate uh, text is my series on Kansas wildflowers and I'm glad you brought up the one you did because it sort of speaks for the whole series I think. Um, the scientific name of this little beautiful wildflower Malva neglecta actually means overlooked and to me many of the natural beauties of Kansas and its vast array of wildflowers are very overlooked. We're, we're not thought of as a state that's known for spectacular natural beauty um, and generally not recognized as a state that just has this amazing array of wildflowers and yet both are true. Um, many of these flowers bloom out here in these lonely and neglected places and they're never seen by a single human eye in their lifetime. Uh, they truly are overlooked. And through my paintings, I really wanted to draw attention to them and sort of give them a voice. And I felt like the, the text naming them on the canvas uh, just really added to the story that I was wanting to tell with these paintings. Question number two. Do you have any training in painting, or is your talent self-taught? Pepper hit my stand there. <laughs> um, I, st I, I am not self-taught. I studied painting in college. Um, I took a beginning painting class my freshman year and just loved it so much that I continued to take more and more classes till I actually ended up with an art minor. And since then, I've just continued to paint in my spare time. And uh, every time I do a painting, I learn something new. And my art is just, I feel like my abilities are continually evolving over time. And I just, um, just want to do it all my life if I can. Uh, question number three. What advice would you give to someone who is wanting to try a oil painting but doesn't have any background in it? Well, I, I would encourage you to try to get some instruction, uh, whether it's taking a class or even just looking at a tutorial on YouTube. And they can give you wonderful advice about uh, what mediums, uh, mixing mediums to use, um, some just some basic tips on how to get started because oil painting there there is a lot of steps involved and 
It's not hard. It's a very forgiving medium because it takes so long to dry. You could keep blending back into it for a long time. You can always change something if you make a mistake. It's very malleable. So my, my advice is twofold. Just get a little, a little bit of instruction to get yourself started and then just go for it because it's so fun. Question three, or four, excuse me. Do you have any tips for using watercolors? What type of paper or application technique? Uh, this question I, I really can't answer because I'm not a watercolorist, I'm an oil painter, and I've only dabbled in watercolors very minimally, so I'm just really not the person to ask about that. I'm afraid my advice wouldn't be the best. <laughs> uh, question five. What subject do you find most challenging? That's a very easy one to answer. For me, it's always been the human form. Uh, it's, you have to be so exact when drawing people. Um, out here in nature, clouds, flowers, trees, there's a lot of room to just play around with your subject. And they're, they're, they're fluid, they're abstract. Um, you can do so many things with the forms and still have them look like a flower or a tree or a cloud you can be very impressionistic with people I, I feel like you have to be a lot more precise and orderly so it is challenging for me um, question six what is your favorite part of being an art teacher we have loved your oils class at the Philly well thank you so much whoever wrote that thank you um, my favorite part is when I have a student that comes in and doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence, maybe because they haven't tried painting before and they're just doubtful of their ability to create something that they really like. And just seeing their confidence grow and if they, you know, discovering that joy of painting and by the end of the class, they say, oh, I, just, I love this. It was so much fun and I really like the painting that I created. That's my favorite part, just being able to share that joy with new people. Next question. When you start your painting, do you sketch or start painting a particular part first? I definitely sketch first. I do a lot of little thumbnail sketches um, on a sketch pad, just a lot of them, just to play around with the composition, the different elements of my painting, the focal point, just to try to get everything positioned where I want it on the canvas before I start actually painting is very important. I think that little bit of planning can make the difference between a successful painting and an unsuccessful one. So once I get the, the, the composition that I want, then I go ahead and sketch on the canvas usually end up erasing a little bit even on the canvas that's okay uh, before I get it just the way I want it and I try to get that sketch pretty pretty um, you know just perfect before I go ahead and start putting paint on there okay uh, last question how long do you have to wait for oils to dry between adding on? Well, it really just depends. Um, it depends on, there's a lot of factors. Oils can take a really long time to dry, especially if you're using linseed oil or something, mixing that in with the paint. They can take up to a week or even longer to become dry to the touch. Uh, so if you're but if you're wanting to add on pretty quickly, you can just dry brush or even if you use turpentine um, or some sort of turpentine substitute, they can dry pretty fast. Also, the temperature of the room is very important. If you're in a warm room with a lot of circulation, maybe a fan going or something, it's going to dry faster. Uh, usually in the summertime, I can go ahead and start layering onto an existing painting after about two to three days. 
it, it'll just be, it won't be completely dry, it won't be set, but it'll be dry to the touch and I can go ahead and put uh, some more over my painting. Well, that's all the questions and I would just, before I say goodbye to you today, I'd like to say thank you so much to the Vernon Philly Art Museum for asking me to do this. It's been so fun and I've enjoyed it and um, I'd also like to say thank you to everyone who's left me positive feedback on the museum's social media platforms this week. Your words are so valuable to me and I treasure them. Thank you so much for encouraging me. Your words truly do give me courage to keep creating. Thank you.